Hello, welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian. We talk about Blu-rays here, and I have the good old reliable new discs box for a collection update for y'all. Maybe like five or six things here. Let's start with this one, The Daydreamer from 1966. This is a Rankin Bass animal in a magic classic, um, and I've been wanting to see this one for a long time. Actually, this was. Another one I think released on DVD by Anchor Bay and then went out of print and was really hard to see. Um, but uh, it is based on, it says, join young Hans Christian Andersen as he daydreams his way to adventure through his most famous fairy tales. In The Little Mermaid, uh, everyone's favorite girl of the sea, played by Haley Mills, which is super cool, uh, must triumph over the evil sea witch, Tallulah Bankhead, a little help from her father, Neptune, Burl Ives, the Emperor's New Clothes, a pair of villainous uh, tailors, Victor Borga and Terry Thomas, create a surprising new outfit of uh, for a gullible king, Edwin. I always love Edwin as a voice and as a presence. Uh, the fun continues with Oscar winner Patty Duke as Thumbelina, Ray Bolger as the Pie Man, Boris Karloff as the Sinister Rat, Margaret Hamilton as the mean Mrs. Uh, Kloppel Bobbler, and much more in this timeless kids classic filmed in both live action and animagic by Rankin Bass, the creators of Frosty the Snowman, Ru- Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and the Wacky World of Mother Goose, as well as uh, the Bermuda Depths, which I talked about on a video a while back from Warner Archive. Um, but yeah, this one is really cool because um, it has this actor, uh, what is his name? Paul O'Keefe. He plays the kid here. He was the brother on the Patty Duke show, which I was addicted to in high school, which used to play on Nick at Night. Um, I used to watch it constantly. So it's really weird to hear his voice and see him because I watch that show so much that his voice is incredibly familiar to me. Um, but anyway, it's it's very much like a Willy Wonka kind of setup. You know, he lives with his dad, played by Jack Guilford. You can see Jack Guilford there, uh, who's a poor um, cobbler, you know, and you know, he talks of this like wonderful magical place and his son like goes to look for it. And he's, it's sort of a Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass kind of thing, uh, where he ends up in this animated world. And it is that classic sort of rank and bass, you know, um, looking stuff like mad monster party looking characters and stuff like that, but a great voice cast. And, um, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really solid film of this ilk. If you're into that kind of animation, uh, no reversible artwork. There's your disc. Um, this is definitely one you should check out. It's it's up uh, the alley of folks who are into Rankin Bass and stop motion like like I am. Uh, it also has an audio commentary by Rankin Bass historian and author Rick Goldschmidt with film historian Lee Gambin, and that's a really nice commentary and one that I dug. This is from Scorpion releasing via Kino, by the way, and it is Region A locked. But I do recommend it, and uh, it was a very pleasant surprise. And my daughter uh, dug it too, so good for kids as well. So that is The Daydreamer. Next, I just got this. I haven't even opened it yet. It's Memories of Murder, Bong Joon-ho's film uh, from, two. Th- let's see here, 2003. And uh, I do remember liking this one quite a bit. I have heard that the transfer has a greenish tint to it, um, but it is uh, a new 4K digital restoration supervised by cinematographer Kim Young-Hoo and approved by director Bong Joon-ho with a 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack. Um, And it says, uh, in this breakthrough second feature from Bong Joon-ho, he explodes the conventions of the uh, policier with thrillingly subversive, genre-defying results based on the true story of a string of serial killings that rocked a rural community in the 1980s. Memories of Murder stars new Korean cinema icon Song Kang-ho as the local officer who reluctantly joins forces with the seasonal, I'm sorry, seasoned soul detective uh, Kim Sang-kyung uh, to investigate the crimes. Leading man leading each man on a wrenching, years-long odyssey of failure and frustration that will drive him to the existential edge. 
uh, combining a gripping procedural with a vivid social portrait of the everyday absurdity of life under military rule. Bong fashions a haunting journey into the uh, ever ever deepening darkness that begins as black comic satire and ends as soul shattering encounter with the abyss. So if you enjoyed uh, the films of Mr. Bong Joon Ho, if you're a Parasite fan, uh, this is definitely recommended. I feel like this is in the vein of that kind of movie. So you should totally check this one out. It will definitely be up your alley. And um, the features include, uh, let's see here, two 2003 commentaries from uh, Bong and members of the cast and crew, plus a new commentary featuring critic Tony Raines, new interview with filmmaker Guillermo del Toro, always great, new interview with Bong about the real-life serial killer who inspired the film, documentary from 2004 on the making of the film, deleted scenes with optional audio commentary by Bong, new interview with film scholar Jeff Smith, on the use of sound in Bong's work, in Coherence, a 1994 student film by Bong, with a new introduction by the director, um, plus an essay by critic and novelist Ed Park. So, really nice uh, criterion of memories of murder for you folks. I do, even though I haven't checked out this Blu ray, I do recommend the movie highly. So, snag this one. Or if you want to wait for the sale, definitely put this on your list. Okay. Switchblade Sisters. Just got this in. This is an Arrow video release of a Jack Hill film, uh, one of Jack Hill's best films, and he made a lot of great films, including Coffee, Foxy Brown, Pit Stop. Uh, he's really one of my favorite exploitation filmmakers. And, um, oh, Spider Baby, of course. Uh, the Swinging Cheerleaders, that's an Arrow release you can get. Um, this is a story of a girl gang uh, called the... Jezebels, I believe. I thought that was the alternate title for the film, if I recall. But um, Lace, played by the great Robbie Lee, um, leader of the inner city girl gang, oh, the Dagger Debs, I'm sorry, uh, meets her match when new girl Maggie, Joanne Nail, moves into the neighborhood. Mistrust and conflict turn to friendship as the girls end up in juvenile detention together at the mercy of abusive guards. Meanwhile, the Dagger Debs' male counterparts, the Silver Daggers, have to contend with the arrival of a new gang uh, led by the villainous Crabs. Uh, but when the, the girls get back on the streets, a planned relation uh, retaliation strike in tandem with the Silver Daggers backfires and puts Lace in the hospital. Okay, it's getting into some serious plot stuff. Just know it's a great girl gang movie and the dialogue is incredibly just crackling. You know, there's so much great dialogue in this movie. This is one that I remember Tarantino put out on DVD, obviously through Rolling Thunder Pictures when he was doing DVD releases, and he would do introductions to each of the films and outro, so he had an intro and outro, and I must have memorized, and not anymore, but I remember watching the intro and outro to Switchblade Sisters a lot because it was a film that I had never heard of, and at the time, I didn't really know Jack Hill, so I owe Tarantino for putting me on to Jack Hill. But again, this is one of his best. It's just a great gang movie. They're, you know, just really mean-spirited, but fun. There's sort of like, a, you know, a Shakespearean vibe to some of the characters. I remember Tarantino talking about, um, I think it was, I can't remember which character was Iago, but it was one of the best on-screen Yagos he'd ever seen or something like that. Unfortunately, this doesn't include the commentary that Tarantino did with Jack Hill on that DVD, which is part of another Blu-ray that I've talked about as part of the imports um, from Subculture from Germany. I think that's out of print now, but um, this is a Let's see, high definition 1080p Blu-ray presentation, original mono audio, um, brand new audio commentary, this is exciting, by uh, historian critics Sam Deegan and Kat Ellinger, the Daughters of Darkness themselves. Can't wait to hear that. That'll be fantastic. We Are the Jezebels, an archival documentary featuring director Jack Hill, producer John Prizer, uh, casting director uh, Gino Havens, production designer B.B. Neal, stunt coordinator Bob Miner, and stars Joanne Nail, Asher Brauner, and Chase Newhart, uh, Gangland, the locations of Switchblade Sisters, an archival documentary in which Jack Hill and filmmaker Elijah Drenner revisit the shooting locations of Switchblade Sisters. I remember liking that. That was part of the previous um, subculture uh, Blu-ray. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, Jack Hill and Joanne Neal at the Grindhouse Film Festival, a 2007 archival interview with director and actor. Interview with Jack Hill, Robbie Lee, Joanne Neal, and archival 1990 interview with the director and stars and in conversation with Johnny Legend. Um, uh, reversible Sleeve and featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by the Twins of Evil. So inside this is the previous sort of... Um, uh, I think poster artwork, uh, but I, I do like this new artwork. This is neat. I'm a fan. Uh, this is the Region A version. I believe there's also a UK version of this one, uh, but this is a blast, and I was really excited that this is coming out and that Over the Edge is coming out, so you got some really fun, you know, teenage gang revolution kind of movies. Um, okay. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly in 4K Ultra HD from Kino. So this has a really nice slipcase, and there is our reversible artwork. Uh, and this looks really good. I mean, it it definitely still is, you know, it has film grain to it. It, it looks like film. It doesn't look like it's been overly DNR'd or processed. It just looks really good. The colors look nice. The detail is great. And this is one of the great Westerns of all time. You know, I mean, decide for yourself, but uh, I know Quentin Tarantino, again, is a huge fan of this one and has called it maybe one of the greatest movies like ever. And I look at that trio. You've got, you know, Clint Eastwood and, uh, uh, of course, Lee Van Cleef and the great Eli Wallach. Uh, who has one of the great cinema introductions in this movie. I'm not going to spoil it, but the way that his character is introduced is so great. Actually, Leone's really great at character introductions in general. Um, you know, they just, especially in the Westerns, they tend to be, you know, shooting somebody or getting shot at or bursting in or just doing something fun. And this is, you know, one of his great masterpieces. I think he is one of the great filmmakers of all time. And I think this, you know, definitely stands as one of the great Westerns. And it's really nice to see it looking so good. Um, this has a whole bunch of extra stuff. You actually have your um, Blu-ray and your 4K. Uh, I can't remember if the 4K... I know the 4K has the commentary. The, there's an audio commentary by film historian Tim Lucas, which is fantastic. And I mean... You know, Tim Lucas come and then I'll come up again in a minute. Actually, I've got another Tim Lucas commentary. They're always great, but this is definitely one of my favorites that he's done. And it is just so detailed and so well put together and thought out. And he just really always does a wonderful job. I've, I've talked about him on the channel before and I love his, his work. Uh, it has Leone's West, this incredible making of documentary, something called Il Maestro, Any Morricone, and GBU parts one and two. So that's a two part. Uh, thing that you can watch uh, the Leone, Leone style on Sergio Leone featurette the man who lost the civil war uh, civil war documentary reconstruction D GBU um, deleted scenes vignettes it's got a ton of stuff this is the edition of this film that you want I don't know that it has every single feature ever produced for a good the bad and the ugly release but I'm pretty happy with what is here and the picture quality is great so I really can't recommend this one enough. You know, it's it's really great to have one of the classics. It's just like for me, when I get what is probably the, the definitive version of a great film, there's a sense of calm that comes over me that I'm just like, ah, I have what will probably be the best version of this film. I mean, I guess we could go to 8K at some point, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it to 8K. But uh, this really impressed me. A wonderful release from Kino. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Okay, one more from Arrow here. Donnie Darko, another 4K. Look at that. Beautiful box. I love these uh, limited edition Arrow boxes. Again, very, very solid, sturdy construction and just feels good to hold in your hand. Um, comes with a nice new poster with the with the um, new art they produced for it uh, there. So that's nice. If you're a Darko fan, 
you can uh, have a nice new poster. And this is a legit hardcover book. This is beautiful. It's just a great little... Oh, man, I love this. Just beautifully bound and printed, full color. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, okay, before I get into the features, let me just say I have one issue with this. And um, at this time... I don't know how it's being dealt with, but basically you get two discs in here, both 4K. You have your uh, theatrical cut and your director's cut. And I have to say that the theatrical cut did not play properly in my player. And I have seen at least one other video uh, where someone else had this issue. Now, I, I'm not sure. I believe it might be limited to certain players. I have a Samsung uh, 4K player that uh, basically when I put in the theatrical cut, the video is very choppy. It looks like frames are being dropped or there's some issue with the film and I can't, it's just way too distracting to even watch. It's just jittery. Uh, and as I said, I've seen other people reporting this. I haven't at this time seen any talk of a replacement program, but um, I, I hope that they will remedy this. And again, it may not be everybody. I guess I've heard some people can play the theatrical version fine. And I should say the director's cut is fine. I had no problems with that. So that's a little frustrating to say the least, especially because the theatrical cut was the one I wanted to watch when I first got it. I just felt like throwing that in. And, you know, of course, there's music changes uh, over the open. You have the Killing Moon used in the theatrical cut and uh, an In Excess song. I think they're covering... Um, never tear us apart or something in that opening bike ride when Donnie's riding down the hill. And for some reason I'm like, I want to watch Donnie riding to killing moon uh, and, and watch that version. And I couldn't. And so I was a little bit flustered by that. So as of now, I don't know what will be done about it, but I do hope arrow will make it right. Um, so just be aware of that. If you have a Sam Samsung 4k, you might have a problem. I don't know all the different 4K players that are affected by this and the ones that aren't, um, but there's a chance you might be fine. So, you know, roll the dice uh, and see. But uh, for this, you have new 4K restorations of both the theatrical and director's cut from the original Cameron Negatives by Arrow, supervised by and approved by director Richard Kelly and cinematography Stephen Poster. Uh, 4K UHD Blu-ray presentations of both cut, both cuts in Dolby Vision HDR10, uh, and they looked good. I mean, I could see the picture of the theatrical, and it looks good. Same thing with the director's cut; it looks nice. Um, let's see: original DTS Master 5.1 audio, optional subtitles, 100-page hardcover book featuring writing by Nathan Rabin, Anton Battelle, and Jamie Graham and an in-depth interview with Richard Kelly, an introduction by Jake Gyllenhaal, and contemporary coverage illustrated with original stills and promotional materials, double-sided folded poster, uh, commissioned artwork by Luke Priest, and six double-sided collector's edition postcards as well. Yes, those are right there the different postcards. Those are nice. Um, and then so on the first disc, you have audio commentary with director, writer-director Richard Kelly and actor Jake Gyllenhaal. Commentary by Keller, producer Sean McKittrick, and actors Drew Barrymore, Jenna Malone, Beth Grant, Mary McDonnell, Holmes Osborne, Catherine Ross, and James Duvall. Uh, Deux Ex Machina, Philosophy of Donnie Darko, a Donnie, uh, documentary by Ballyhoo Motion Pictures on the making of Donnie Darko, containing interviews with writer-director Kelly, uh, producer Sean McKittrick, cinematographer Stephen Poster, editor Sam Bauer, composer Michael Andrews, uh, costume designer April Ferry, production designer Alec Hammond, and actor James Duvall. The Goodbye Place, Kelly's 1996 short film, which anticipates some of the themes and ideas of his features, and 20 deleted scenes with optional commentary by Kelly. And the director's cut features audio commentary by Kelly and filmmaker Kevin Smith, the Donnie Darko Production Diary, an archival documentary charting the film's production with optional commentary by cinematographer Stephen Poster, archive interviews with Kelly, actors Jake Gyllenhaal, Jenna Malone, Drew Barrymore, James Duvall, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Holmes Osborne, Noel Wiley, and Catherine Ross, producers Sean McKittrick, Nancy Juvonen, uh, Hunt Lowry, 
and Casey Lascala and cinematographer Stephen Poster. Three archive featurettes. They made me do it. They made me do it. Two and number one fan, a dark Um, so just an epic release. I, uh, you know, again, arrow really doing a wonderful job with their four K's. I just need them to take care of that theatrical thing and, uh, we'll be fine. And maybe by the time this is posted, there will already be an announcement. So forgive me if that is the case. Um, but anyway, really excited to have this. I'm a big fan of this movie and this seems pretty definitive in terms of additions. Um, Okay, and last, we have one more here. This is Hercules and the Captive Women. This is a, a new special edition from The Film Detective, and they are really doing some interesting work over there. I talked about uh, Giant, I think it's called Giant from the Unknown on the channel, and that was a really nice looking 4K restoration. This is also a 4K restoration from the original 35 camera negative, and... Um, this is, you know, a Hercules movie. And it was one that was actually done and spoofed by MST3K. And as you can see there, that version is included on this disc, which is nice. Uh, also an intro by Frank Conniff, uh, liner notes by author and historian C. Courtney Joyner, a brand new docu documentary, Hercules and the Conquest of Cinema. I want to say that's about 20 minutes. I think that's Ballyhoo Motion Pictures. And it's all about peplum films, you know, sword and sandal films and the Italian film industry. And uh, it seemed, seems like pretty en enjoyable stuff from what I saw of it. And um, an, an audio commentary by film critic and screenwriter Tim Lucas. And he's great to always have on Italian films. Obviously, he is a master of all things Mario Bava, but his knowledge of Italian cinema is pretty boundless. And so he does his usual bang up job, um, in this track. And I think that's a really nice thing to have for this one. So, uh, film detective really trying to make some special edition specialness, if you will. Uh, this has originally released in 1961 as Ercola alla conquista di Atlantide. Uh, in Italy, Hercules and the Captive Women is the updated U S version released for audiences in 1963. Follow the Chronicles of Hercules with Reg Park, uh, in his Hercules film debut, the bold and daring Hercules encounters Ismay uh, when he must uh, save her from a shape-shifting creature, and that's just the beginning. Ismay uh, then bring her brings Hercules to Atlantis, where they come to face to face with the evil queen Antonia, uh, Ismay's mother, and try to prevent her dreams of world conquest. Will Hercules prevail? Find out in Hercules and the Captive Women. Um, so this is cool stuff. Again. That's a couple releases in a row from the film detective that I've been impressed with, and I think they have more stuff coming. Um, so keep an eye on them, and definitely know that they are doing a really solid job. Looks like uh, Shout Factory may be involved there in the back, um, but yeah, they are definitely becoming somebody that, eat with each release, I'm like, well, I'm going to probably have to pick that up because this looks like another gem from them. They are really taking it seriously and putting a lot into these releases. So uh, please watch for Film Detective Blu-rays as they are released. But if you're into the sword and sandal peplum kind of movies, uh, this one is fun, you know, and you should enjoy it, I believe. So uh, definitely worth your time. So that is it for this collection update. Uh, again, if you enjoy this sort of video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up on the video and a comment if you like about any of these videos or anything you've picked up recently. I'm always interested to hear what people are picking up. Uh, if you're, you picked up something and you enjoyed it, tell me about it. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.